Hey everyone, how's it going? Okay, it's time. How's it going everybody? This is the number one question I get asked. Number one out of everything, out of all the emails, comments. You guys ask good questions and this is actually a good question that a lot of people overlook. Tin Man, how do you tune a carburetor? <coughs> That's a great question guys. So how do you tune a carburetor? Well, there's lots of different ways to do it. I'm gonna tell you my way, there's other ways. Um, I like my saws a little rich. And what a little rich means is the high jet is open a little bit more than maybe it should be. That's just how I run my saws when I'm working. It does slow them down a little bit, but you'll never burn a saw if running a little rich. Also, uh, if a saw is a little rich, they tend to have a little, they tend to be a little torquier versus when you get them right on, right on the edge of leanness. Okay, so number one, you have two jets and a carburetor. We got to start right at the beginning. You have two jets, okay? There's three screws and two jets. The first screw is the idle screw. Usually you don't have to touch that. Now if your chain is doing this constantly then you want to take your idle screw and back it out till that the, so that the chain stops spinning because remember a centrifugal clutch will engage at a certain rpm okay there's two more screws there's a high jet and a low jet okay so Most saws, the high jet and low jet will be on one side or the other. This is a Husqvarna 365. It's on the left side. Most stills, it's on the right. Now, another question I get, what if they aren't marked? Okay, so in every saw I've ever worked on, there might be a few oddballs. I'm sure you guys will tell me ones that are, that are uh, different, but in every saw that I've ever worked on, the low jet is the one closest to the cylinder, okay? So if you're looking at the carb and the carbs here and the cylinders here, the low jet is the one closest to the cylinder. Okay. The high jet is the one farthest from the cylinder. So basically how that works is at idle, at, at, at idle and up to a certain RPM, we'll just pick a number. I can't think off the top of my head what the RPM is. We'll say zero to five or 6,000 RPM. That's your low jet. That's where your saw idles. And that's what gets it going until you hit the high jet, okay? Most saws, if you don't know what the settings are, try one to one and a half turns out. Screw it in. Here, let's get let's get up close here, guys. Okay. I'm gonna pause you. Let's get up close. I'm sorry, I forgot my short tripod. It's on the bench. Okay. Okay, look, low jet, high jet. Low jet is closest to the cylinder. Okay. So what you wanna do is you wanna put your screwdriver through. See how it's on the low jet there? And you wanna seat it. If you're not sure where it's supposed to be, go ahead and seat it all the way. Let's do that with this saw. Okay, so what are we at there? Half, count the turns. One, one and a quarter. Now notice I didn't reef that down. If you reef that down, you will damage it most more often than not, okay? So I know one quarter, half, one and a quarter, okay? Now this is your high jet, right here. These ones happen to stick out. Some of them are recessed in the carb, like a lot of stills are like that, okay? Here's your high jet. Half, I just, I do it in halves, okay? Well, this one's about one and a quarter also, interesting. Now what I find, guys, is most saws are happy at one and a quarter, but don't, okay, half, don't, 
Don't just say, oh, it says on the side one and a quarter and leave it at that. Autofocus. Okay, so those are your jets. I'm just gonna set you guys back up here. Just doing some work and I thought, you guys ask this question all the time. I gotta, gotta tell you guys what's up or at least help you guys. I don't know everything, but this is just how I do it. Okay, so those are your jets. I picked this saw because it's ported and it's very, very loud. It's very apparent. Um, it's very apparent when this saw is four stroking. Now, what is four stroking? Four stroking is when you're getting more fuel than you can burn, okay, on the top. Um, you'll hear it. Here's what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to take this saw. I'm going to go on the high jet. And in fact, I can't see these jets because that little pipe that's in there is missing, okay? I'm going to take this high jet and I'm going to back it out another quarter turn, half a turn. I'm going to make this thing very rich. Now let's fire this saw up, get it warm. I'm going to put it into this wood. I want you to hear it four stroking. Four stroking will slow the saw down, but you'll never hurt a saw four stroking it, okay? Never. You will hurt a saw leaning it out. So let's fire this thing up and put in some wood. I have had this running. It's getting cold again. So let's get her fired back up. See how she starts at those settings. guys this saw is warm now I want you to hear blubber in the cut that means that it's four stroking okay listen for the four stroke <laughs> You guys hear it go bah, bah, bah. that's my best impression of a four stroking saw this saw is very rich right now um, now if you put a long bar on this this is just a 20 inch bar um, if you put a long bar on this and did that it probably would be fine bar length and size of wood and species of wood will all dictate your tuning okay so let's take this saw I'm gonna cut again Okay, I'm going to put it back in the wood. I'm going to take these, this high jet and I'm going to lean it out. I'm going to put it in the wood again so you can hear. I'm going to, I'm going to lean this thing out, meaning turning it clockwise in. I'm going to lean it out about a quarter of a turn, half of a turn. I want you guys to hear it. Okay, I'll make another cut so you guys can hear what's going on again. <laughs> hear that okay I'll take this high jet and I'm going to turn it in about a half a turn because I turned it right out there you guys hear it four stroke on top listen at the top rpm you can hear it you can hear it snarl that's a four stroke now you want it to four stroke until you get good load on it and clean up in the wood. Then pull it up, listen for it to four stroke again. Now you guys 
hear that? Four stroke, four stroke, four stroke. You actually get it some load on it. It cleans up and pulls hard. The minute I pull it up, it starts four stroking again. Listen, I'll do it again. That's how you tune a chainsaw. Now I picked this saw because it's ported, it's super loud, it's easy to hear. Stock saws are a little bit harder. Even that echo when I was running it here, I couldn't always hear the four stroking. So that's another reason why I like, like ported saws with an open up muffler. Now the bottom end, I'm going to show you guys. I have it at about one and a quarter. I'll turn it in and as you turn it in, it'll speed the saw up. The chain will start going. Okay, that's leaning it out, and as you lean the saw up, the RPM will speed up, right? That's why saws with air leaks generally won't go back to idle, because they're lean. I'm going to turn it in till it just wants to die. It'll speed up, and then you'll hear it slow down. And then I'm going to turn it out. Same thing, it'll speed up, it'll settle down, and then it'll want to die. And when I turn it out, I'm richening it. The distance from lean to rich, go in the middle, that's usually about where it goes. And then check for good throttle response. You want it to pick up throttle right away and, and idling and restarting. You want it to start one pull when it's warm. If it doesn't, you know, try giving it a little more or a little less. Okay. guys hear that I turned it in first it wants to die and now I turned it out and it wants to die I went about halfway now do you guys hear the, R the rpm the idle is actually faster now so this saw is actually leaner than it was when I started you hear the chain wants to go a little bit let's see that again I'm gonna fire it up you see how the chains moving and I'm blipping the throttle and it's 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 moving quickly so um, I can give it a little more low jet, which is just, just, we're talking sixteenths of a turn, guys. And that'll probably make it settle down and idle. Now, if you give it too much low jet, it'll tend to load up at idle, meaning it'll sit there and it'll want to die. Okay, uh, I'm going to do that for you. I'm going to load this thing up right now. I'm going to open the low jet up too much. This is the sign of a rich saw. It'll sit here and idle and it'll die. We, I figure we need to cover all this stuff, guys. So here we go. Restart it. Again, it starts easy. Hey, this thing's too rich now. I made the saw too rich. You hear it? Now. 
it'll probably load up and get slower and slower and die. I'll give it a little more, you guys can see. It'll get slower and slower and it'll just load up with fuel and it'll die. died finally guys okay you hear that now when I was revving it there it's also slow to rev now this is a ported saw um, ported saws are usually yippity skippity they want to go right now so again carb tuning is everything um, carb tuning in a sharp chain porting don't matter if you don't know how to sharpen a chain or, or you don't uh, or you don't uh, know how to tune your saw properly it's uh, it's one of those things. Then when you get good at those things and you port your saw, then your saw will rip. But every saw is going to tune different and in different uh, circumstances. Interesting. Just making sure my spark plug's tight, a little sooty around there. Okay, I put it back out to a one and a quarter. Let's see if this thing starts. You want your saw to restart. Check the RPM. did there it came back to idle and it was idling a little slow so what I did was and guys nice big chips it was idling a little slow there so what I did was I actually gave the low jet just a little squeak and closed it okay let's try her one more time and then that's carb tuning in a nutshell <laughs> <laughs> these things really clog up noodling this stuff okay guys there you go uh, i hope i answered most of your questions started about one and a quarter one and a quarter uh uses little use as little idle screws you can and uh you know that that should get you in the ballpark with most saws not all some of them are funky 576 xp is like two and a quarter on the high and low or something silly like that but most older saws you will pre-emission saws you will get in the ballpark at one and a quarter again check if it four strokes out of the cut put it in the wood it should clean up no more four stroking and then when you pull it out it should four stroke again and then of course you want it to return to idle if it loads up at idle it's too lean or sorry if it loads up at idle it's too rich on the low jet if it idles a little too fast either you got an air leak but let's pretend you don't have an air leak okay if it idles too fast at idle 
give it a little more low jet. Just give it, you know, a sixteenth of a turn at a time. Don't over adjust it. That's where a lot of guys, they go half a turn, full turn, and then their saw is just blubbering fuel out. Okay? So there's carb tuning. Uh, I hope I answered your questions. Um, that's what I know. That's how I do it. And uh, I have never, ever, ever blown up a saw by making it lean. So there you guys go. That's what I know. Okay. As always, thanks for watching. Take her easy. Glad you guys came. And hopefully I answered some of your questions. I love this saw. This thing's an animal. 65cc, 365 special, guys. It's uh, it's rowdy. Anyhow, later, guys.